North Carolina Congressman Madison Cawthorn always finds a way to trigger the left. Yeah, this time it happens to be super liberal Rachel Maddow. Recently, a producer for her show accidentally copied Madison Cawthorn's office on an email that said they were afraid of Cawthorn accepting an invitation to come on the show. Gosh, I love that. <laughs> Maddow so wanted a comment about the group of North Carolina voters alleging Cawthorn can't seek re-election. Re they quote Section 3 of the 14th Amendment that says you can't hold office after engaging in an insurrection or rebellion against the United States. Good grief. Well, all of this for simply speaking at President Trump's rally back on January 6th, a day where not a single person has been charged with insurrection. Joining us now is the man himself, North Carolina Congressman Madison Cawthorn. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us tonight. You know, first I just have to ask you, what do you make of the left using January 6th as a means to cancel and silence anybody that supported President Trump? Well, Mercedes, Jen, thank you both so much for having me on. And, you know, I think it's very clear to every single American that this is just another impeachment of President Donald Trump. It's just that he's not in office right now, so they're not capable of actually being able to do it. So instead, they're going after his fighters. They're going after the America First Patriots because they want to get to the American people. Unfortunately, the reason they tried to destroy President Trump is because he was standing in the way. Well, now the last line of defense is a bunch of members of Congress who are now standing up in lieu of Mr. President, of the president being gone, which I think will be fixed sometime soon in 2024. So I got to ask you, if Rachel Maddow asks you to go on the show, will you do it? Oh, are you kidding me? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I am a good <laughs> acolyte of my predecessor, Mark Meadows, who was my debate coach in high school. So I am very excited oh. to get to debate the left <laughs> at any opportunity. Did see. They just use nothing but fallacies and uh, emotional pleas to try and get their points across. And all we have to do is rely on truth and common sense. I saw you calling them out on Twitter. Did you get any sort of response from her team or from her? We have not gotten any response yet. So, I mean, this is truly, you know, I, I always say the face of a coward is back of their head as they run from a battle. <laughs> so let me ask you, uh, this blunder from Maddow's team and you've seen these baseless attacks coming from these activists with nothing better to do. To do. Um, do you think it diminishes their credibility? Is this just part of their targeting tactics to take down any sort of popular Republican congressman? You know what? I believe this is just part of their targeting tactics. Unfortunately, they just happened to get caught this one time. Uh, when we're starting to look at what's going on, you know, they're trying to say that I'm incapable of being able to run for Congress because of the 14th Amendment, which is absolutely asinine and insane. Uh, I believe it's just that they're trying to either frustrate, or drain the resources of, or be able to destroy anybody they believe is going to be able to go against their agenda. Uh, you know, Mercedes and Jen, I know you all have been around the political game for a little while, and you understand that a lot of times the Republican Party has just been controlled opposition to the Democrats. Uh, but unfortunately, that narrative is changing for them. And so I believe we're going to be coming back with the roar of lions, and we will be holding people accountable and taking our country back in 2022. Yeah, no question about it. And, you know, Madison, unfortunately, the government isn't just weaponizing the Jan 6th committee. Biden's DOJ, they're also expanding upon this insurrection narrative by creating a task force to investigate what they claim is domestic terrorism. Now, you know, how do we expect them to define domestic terrorism? They can't even define what a boy or girl is. I mean, isn't this just a ploy to take away our rights? And I mean, what can we do to stop this madness? It is. You know, I believe the Democrats have one great strength, and it's their ability to redefine words and to define actions as certain words. And make no mistake, when they use the term domestic terrorist, they're doing it on purpose. You see, under the Patriot Act and a lot of acts that have followed since then, if you are considered a terrorist, an enemy combatant of the United States government, you lose all your rights as an American citizen. That Bill of Rights is no longer accessible to you. And then you can be tortured, you can be spied upon, you can be kidnapped, you can be your assets can be frozen. Uh, it really is a trump card that they can have to where the federal government will be able to wield all power against the American people. Uh, but I'm really wanting to remind the people here in the federal government that they should be afraid of the American people, not the other way around. Yeah, I got to tell you, look, I've worked in two administrations, and I've, I've really never seen such a um, aggressive Department of Justice, uh, especially when you're talking about they're looking to create the special unit on domestic terrorists, uh, at, when we know that there's foreign threats, let's remind ourselves of that. And secondly, you also have the Biden administration talking about the fact that they're getting a list of employees that are basically have requested or asked for religious exemptions. I mean, 
Where does this administration, when, when does this end? Well, Mercedes, I know you're a great student of history, getting to uh, be in your house a couple of times. I've seen all the books you have. And so I know you know this, that nobody in all of history who's been making lists of their citizens, trying to put them into categories, has ever been on the right side of history. I mean, you can go all the way from the Mongols all the way up to the Nazis. The people who put people on lists are always on the wrong side of history. And so I genuinely believe that they should be very wary. And we should realize that history does tend to repeat itself. It rhymes quite often. Uh, and we should realize that the federal government is not working on our benefit. We should completely uh, dismantle the federal government, have it brought down to a much smaller size, one that is much more manageable, one that cares about war, trade, and infrastructure. And aside from that, has nothing to do with your personal life. Send all the power back to the states as the, as the founders really truly intended. I mean, if you look at the great debates that were happening in the 1780s uh, between the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists, you see what the Anti-Federalists are talking about that this bureaucratic wing of the three-letter agencies could grow so large that it could almost become a new King George. And I believe that's what we're starting to face today. Wow. Well, I might have to send you uh, several of my history books over your way, Congressman. <laughs> but uh, it's great to have you on. Thanks so for great joining to see us you. tonight. Mercedes, you guys are fantastic. Thank you both so much.